and welcome once again to The Blueprints. This is Canada's Conservative Podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Schmale, Member of Parliament for Halliburton Pool for Lake Sprock, with new content for you every single Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. If you like what you're listening to, and if you can't listen to it right this second, download it, listen to it on platforms like CastBox, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, you name it, it is out there. Together, we can push back against that ever-moving liberal agenda. And of course, we ask that you like, comment, subscribe, share this program, because I guarantee you, it's probably content you're not getting in the mainstream media. So today's show, lots of great content lined up for you. I'm bringing back a good friend, Kelly McCauley, Member of Parliament from Edmonton West. He's also the critic for the Treasury Board. We're kind of going to summarize everything that's been happening this summer. There's been a lot. And uh, we're going to try to bring it all together because we have uh, corruption, we have police investigation interference, we have chaos at our airports, the Arrive Can app, passports, we, we have issues left, right and center with the attack on farmers, the 30% plan to reduce uh, uh, fertilizers on, on their crops and, and so much more. So Kelly, come on in, bring into this discussion because we have a lot to talk about. Well, thanks, Jamie. It's a pleasure to be back. Uh, I don't know how we're going to get through all of the liberal incompetence and mass in 12 minutes. Perhaps if we just focused and took about 15 seconds, we could focus on what the liberals have succeeded on this summer instead. <laughs> well, we have, <laughs> we have a lot of content to fill, a lot of dead air. So uh, let's start <laughs> with tourism, right? It's, it's tourist season, the warm weather, people are out and about, but yet our airports are a mess. Canadians can't get a passport and the Arrive Can app is just putting enormous pressure on our border services. The officers are just under undue stress because people are frustrated at the whole app. We have tourism operators saying, get rid of it. We have issues that it's not working. People with cell phones don't have the app being told to quarantine despite vaccination status and vaccine, double, triple, you name it. This is an entire mess, all created by the government. No, I agree. And I was fortunate enough. I grew up in the uh, the tourism business, uh, 35 years in hotels. I've spoken to a lot of my former uh, workmates and colleagues across the country, especially the, the large hotels in major cities. They're losing conferences. They're losing the opportunity to even bid on conferences coming in from the U.S. because of a variety can, because of the mess at the airports. And this, these are big money events that create a lot of work in our uh, cities, um, creates a lot of work in our restaurants, our, creates work for our cabbies and that, and it's disappearing because of Arrive Can, the government's inability to uh, get the, the borders set properly so people can show up at Pearson and perhaps get into Toronto before their lineup ends. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a mess right now. Um, I've chatted with, uh, some uh, resort owners in your neck of the woods, and they're saying their U.S. visitors have dropped off massively when this is normally high season for them, where they're getting top dollar. They are not seeing the people coming up from the States because it's the same thing. The Americans do not want to mess around, perhaps be delayed, perhaps not being able to board a plane because they haven't got the right cam working properly. Two years um, of lockdowns, people are finally saying, we're able to travel again. We're able to get out and about. And of course, many locations you need a passport. And we have saw the disaster, which was the Service Canada offices, the passport offices this past spring. They're not getting much better. They're, I think they're a little better. The Liberals have created a cabinet task force to deal with the right. problem. But not only that, what did they get for the people lining up in Montreal? The government is so thoughtful and caring. Yeah. They bought chairs for the people waiting outside and camping I mean, over overnight. That is their solution, it appears to be across the country, is not to get the passport workers back in their offices, not to open up on weekends, after hours. It's to buy 801 chairs, plastic chairs, ergonomic plastic chairs yeah. to put outside the Montreal passport office. In Edmonton, they are lining up in downtown Edmonton at 12.30 in the morning just to get in line for their passport. It's ridiculous. And we brought this to the attention. I remember standing up in House of Commons in March, mentioning how Service Canada was making Edmontonians wait in minus 20 snowstorm outside because they only had one wicket open in the whole office. 
they've had months. Documents have come out that the government uh, knew about this uh, a good six months ago. It was going to be a disaster. Well, how could and you not haven't... if you're opening up? How could you not well, anticipate this? Because it's the Liberal government. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think they would anticipate sunrise each day. <laughs> the level of incompetence from this government it's it's mind boggling. It's it's difficult to put into words just how poorly this government operates. I think unless there's a Photoshop involved or perhaps an apology to deliver, the government is just not interested in it. And they just do not seem to be interested in serving Canadians. We see that at Pearson Airport. We saw um, CAPSA, the people who provide the screeners. Up until April, even though documents show that travel was doubling every month, in April, they were still hadn't recalled their workers for the uh, airport screening. They kept all the bureaucrats employed, but the actual people doing the real work, they left sitting at home. We still don't have all the workers uh, back at work from handling the passports. It's it's an incomprehensible. Wasn't the document mess. saying uh, upwards of seventy percent are still at home? I think it's eleven uh, percent to twenty eight percent. I'm hearing different numbers. Okay, still I think it's 28% of Service Canada, but 11%. And you know, you can't sit there and put together a passport, process a passport sitting at home. Yeah, that's a bit and, of a problem. And it's reflected in people's uh, wait times. It's horrible. We, we just heard uh, out of Manitoba, a family of four had to cancel their entire vacation, lo- losing tens of thousands because they couldn't get passport in time. And and these aren't people, well, I let it expire a week ago. These people who've been applying for it months ago cannot get it. Okay. So we, we, we tackled the tourism, travel and tourism industry. Let's talk about the inflation issue that we're, we're having right now. We brought on Adam Chambers a couple of weeks ago, the deputy finance critic to, to talk about this, uh, pushing 8% uh, costs of everything, just cascading it just seems never ending. And at the same time, the energy sector has been decimated in this country. Investment is gone. We have the ability to, to displace some of the, the, the Russian oil and gas that has been uh, kind of mixed up with the conflict of Ukraine and the sanctions and what have you. But we have the ability to, to or the reserves anyways, to, uh, to, to supply the world. But yet we have no way to get that to market. The reason being horrible government policy and now the solution to inflation, according to the government, is to spend more money on more projects because things are just going so well in other departments. That's just it. The government has a plan, uh, $100 billion stimulus spending. We're at almost full employment across the country. And yet the government still and 8.1% inflation. And Christia Freeland is planning on plowing another $100 billion of stimulus into the country. Uh, food, um, I think, is both food inflations. I think most recent numbers are 8.8%. And yet the solution of the government we just saw is to force farmers to cut back on the nitrates and the fertilizer they can use by 30%. So at the same time, we've got, we're going to have a food crisis around the world because of uh, the grain and everything being held up in Ukraine because of the Russian invasion. Canada, one of the bread baskets of the world, is going to be hamstrung by the Liberal government by forcing farmers to reduce the amount of fertilizer they can use in order to grow crops. So we're going to have higher prices, less output, and less ability to feed the world. It's it's insane. I have no idea who is coming up with this stuff. Like, who sits in Ottawa when food inflation is at 8.8% and thinks, geez, let's let's cut back on the amount of fertilizers uh, we'll allow Canadian farmers to use. Yeah, it's and we'll restrict, so well we'll in the restrict Netherlands. their ability to grow wheat. <laughs> yeah, it's because I bet you some of those people in Ottawa won't be the ones starving. So most Canadians will just be poor, hungry, and cold. Right. It, it just seems like it's doing this on purpose. This is a, a government policy, a terrible government policy being forced upon Canadian farmers by 2030. Now, of course, they haven't come up with a plan on how they're going to do that and what that involves. But at the same time, they're they're setting the marker now. We've already seen what's happening in the Netherlands. Almost 30,000 farms being told to basically reduce or change what they're doing. 
And that's causing a stir with on, amongst the population because they understand how important the Netherlands are to food, food production in Europe and a lot of parts of the world and part of Africa, you name it. Yeah, maybe the liberals expect uh, the farmers are going to just feed people with uh, good wishes and good feelings. But it's, it's, it's insane. Again, at the time where we're seeing food inflation, 8.8% highest that we've seen since uh, you know 1980s. Who and the Prime government Minister is then? working yeah, since you know Pierre Trudeau. But we have the government actively working to make things worse, actively working to punish Western farmers, actively working to make food more expensive. It's like something out of a bad political novel. <laughs> Not <laughs> to mention the, the carbon thing. tax and the clean fuel well, standard, which of course tax, we- The fuel standards, charging farmers through the, uh, through the roof to dry their wheat mm -hmm. and to dry their, uh, their pulse goods and that. It's, again, it all just, the government doesn't seem to realize that these costs cascade down through the That's supply right. system and stick it to those who are least able to afford it. Uh, absolutely. Not only that, we have veterans affairs. We have veterans still waiting for benefits. We have a military that can't seem to buy equipment. I think, what, what are we at? 10 plus years for handguns. We have immigration department that's backed up tw uh, 2 million files now. This this is a, a cast, talk about cascading. This is a cascading government of failure. It truly is. You know, the, the government, when Trudeau came in in 2015, he used this, this line, open by default. I think really what they are are incompetent by default. I can't think of any program that they're working on right now that is working. You're right, we've got a massive backlog for Veterans Affairs. We have a Veterans Food Bank near my office in West Edmonton. I visited them the other day. They are struggling to feed veterans who cannot get proper support from the government. We've got, again, our military, we can't buy ships. Our fixed wing search and rescue planes that the government has bought will not be certified, $4 billion will not be certified to be able to fly in Canada. After $4 so, billion. $4 billion for 18 planes, politically motivated purchase to give certain jobs in liberal held areas. But so messed up by this government, there's strong word out there that these planes will never be able to fly in Canada. We are you know, a country surrounded by, you know, three large bodies of water, we will not have the ability to perform search and rescue missions on the Pacific Ocean, up north, or the Atlantic. And what so about what shipbuilding? Our... Where, where are we in that? Well, that's, that's, that's one of the success, our successes. We're only delayed a couple of decades with shipbuilding and probably, you know, 50, 60 billion dollars above budget. But it's it's the same thing. There, there's no oversight. And I think the hallmark of this government, zero accountability. They'll go out and make wonderful announcements and then believe that an announcement means something gets done. But it's not. Our, um, our needed uh, supply ships are delayed. I think it's now to 2028. Um, they're being built around the world for about 300 million. Ours are going to cost about 3 billion per ship by the time we're finished, are icebreakers. The government's building them in two different plants, one in the West Coast, one in Quebec, which is gonna add, the parliamentary budget officer figures it's gonna add 800, I think it's 857 million to the cost by having it built in separate uh, docks and separate designs. So- Separate design. Yeah, you would think that we'd just take one design and have them build both, but our, build both the same design, but that's that's not what we do. So it's, they have to retrain, oh my goodness. Okay, I, well. This, this government is so bad at procurement, like I don't believe they could go into a Tim Hortons and buy a double-double, much less, you know, icebreakers and warships or handguns or anything else that our men and women in uh, uniform need. Well, oh, that's, that's a, a big list. I, and there's even more to go. We, we can talk about the rising crime in may, most of our cities. You're looking at Edmonton that's dealing with an issue. The, the solution there, and of course, uh, is to crack down even harder on law-abiding firearms owners. 
And of course, that will do nothing to to stop the the shootings that we all want to stop in our shootings. But they they will not go after where the problem is, the 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 porous border, uh, accountable sentencing instead of the revolving door justice system that we seem to be cascading towards. Uh, we should be bolstering the uh, police services that are tasked with reducing violent crime, but we don't seem to be doing much of anything on that front. No, it, it, it's remarkable. Um, we know a lot of the guns, a huge majority of the guns being used in these drive-by shootings, these, these acts of violence, are weapons smuggled in from the U.S., and yet the Liberals have no plan on addressing the smuggling, no plans on helping the police forces deal with the gang violence across the country. Instead, what do we see? We saw that horrible, horrible massacre in Nova Scotia. And what did the Liberals do? Even their first instinct is to interfere with the review and interfere with the investigation in order to push their uh, their gun legislation. It's I, I've seen a lot of, of reprehensible things done by this liberal government. Whether and it's been lie about it. the NC Lavalin scandal, the the We Charity, but not, I've never seen them stoop this low to use and interfere in an investigation to push their ideology. It's it's remarkable, and yeah, then they'll they'll sit and. Uh, the line we have senior RCMP officers stating the government interfered and they'll stand in the house. We did no such thing. Uh, the RCMP must be lying. It's remarkable. It's remarkable yeah. that the notes from different people who take pretty accurate notes uh, oh, yes. as to what's happening on the meetings uh, seem to line up with each other. And it doesn't look good for the government in terms of who is lying and who isn't. No, I agree. And these are senior well thought of RCMP officers who kept meticulous notes about the interference from the government and from the RCMP commissioner. Very meticulous notes as they're required to do. And yet the government sits and uh, says, no, not accurate, didn't happen, perhaps a miscommunication. Much like uh, the Liberals, when they spoke about uh, invoking the Emergency Act, well, it was a mis miscommunication when we said our, or the uh, the police forces asked for it. Mis yeah, miscommunication. And yeah. then it was economic was the reason, which turned out to be untrue because most of the fund for businesses that were impacted by the, uh, the, 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 the protest didn't even apply for it. I believe it was severely... Uh, under uh, applied for there was there there was tons of money left the people who set that fire in that apartment building had nothing to do with the convoy the person standing on the tomb of the unknown soldier had nothing to do with the the convoy it, it just one after the other that the the reasons the air fingers quote reasons for invoking the emergencies act just untrue 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 it, yeah, it, what did, it, uh, it Stephen Stephen Colbert from the uh this TV show talked talk about a lack of uh, truthiness. <laughs> that, seems, that seems to be the case here. And, and you can agree with the, what the truckers want with the mandates. You can disagree with them about it. You can disagree about how they went about it. And I can see all sides of that. But you cannot agree that the government is acting properly when they knowingly lie to Canadians. And I was in Ottawa for the whole lockdown. You know, and again, there's very many different sides to it, much like the, the old fable of the three people, blind men touching a different part of the elephant and trying explaining what the elephant is. The trucker convoy is very similar. And again, you could disagree with their methods, agree with it, however you wish, but the government should be telling the truth to their citizens. And the government knowingly lied. They lied about uh, truckers ransacking the, a CRA office. They and lied about, about fire. You know, I was in I was in committee when we asked the former police chief from Ottawa, did you ask for the invocation of the act? No. Did anyone from the city of Ottawa ask? No. The current police chief we asked, did you ask for the invocation of the act? No. The RCMP, no. And yet Trudeau and his ministers repeatedly stood in the house and said, we acted on 
we invoked it on the request of the um, police services. They knowingly lied about it. And that's the shocking part of this government. Well, we are unfortunately running out of time. There's a few more things I wanted to cover, but I, as you, I'm going to get you to give us some good news because, and what the conservatives are going to do, how we're going to continue to fight. Because as you know, I always give the guests the last word. So the floor is yours, Kelly McCauley. Give us some good news. <laughs> well, good news. I am in beautiful Lindsay, Ontario, in the wonderful riding uh, represented by Mr. Smell. The weather is beautiful. The rain has stopped and we're expecting some... Uh, Fantastic weather for the next couple of days. Um, the other good news, we will have a permanent new leader announced very shortly. We'll be back in the House in September holding uh, the Liberals to account. And we're starting to see the government bit by bit by bit admit that perhaps they were wrong on some of the mandate issues and some of the other issues. And I, I believe that we're going to see with under pressure from our colleagues, the Liberals backing down on some of the most egregious uh, acts, whether it's using the tragedy in Nova Scotia or using the pandemic for their uh, political gains. I think we're seeing the uh, the end of that. And that to me is good news for people in Edmonton and people live across the country. I hope so too. Kelly McCauley, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. And thanks for that quick rundown on the Liberals' adventures throughout the summer. <laughs> and uh, appreciate your work as Treasury Board critic as well. It's been my pleasure to be back with you. I think the first time I did it, you weren't even doing camera work. It was only on, uh, only on air. That's true. That, see, video. we're evolving. <laughs> we're evolving. There we go. New content for you every single Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. If you like what you heard, what you watched, please like, comment, subscribe, share this program. I guarantee you what you heard today, that content that we just talked about for the last 15 minutes is something you're probably not getting on the mainstream media. Of course, tell your friends about it because you can download it, listen to it platforms like CastBox, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, you name it, it is out there. We're not taking time off. We're not slowing down because the Liberals sure aren't. Again, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time, new content every single Tuesday. Until then, remember, low taxes, less government, more freedom. That is The Blueprint. <laughs>